so I have literally just finished doing these nails. I've shared a little picture on Facebook and now I'm going to really quickly edit the video so it should be up within the next few days. So this is my lady with really 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 long nails and this is the third set I've done on her so we've taken them, we've, I clipped them off, filed all of it down to um, a very thin clear base left on the natural nails and then I'm re-sculpting. Um, with extreme length nails I would say every two to three um, visits and she comes every two weeks you would need to do this um, my lady prefers it done every time I can occasionally like one of my other videos you saw like put pigments and stuff on but she likes the underneath to kind of match the top of the nail so she doesn't like to see like a previous design under her nails when there's a new design on top so I do tend to clip off file off and re-sculpt a lot with her um, also to keep them balanced in the right shape it's, it's just easier to clip them off um, and start again. So I've done all my usual prep prime of the natural nail um, and then I've just applied a thin clear base um, over the natural nail and extending down um, mainly because you want a nice smooth transition from your natural nail to the sculpted um, free edge and also because I'm doing this as a full glitter nail I obviously need that um, acrylic base otherwise the glitter is not going to last when I take the form away. So I am using the metallic multi-cut in silver and this I'm just using as a full base underneath the nails and then I'm going to pat in a different glitter on top. So, oh I didn't put a picture at the beginning did I? I shall have to put a picture at the end of this video of the inspiration that she sent me. Um, she's off to a wedding so she sent me a picture of the dress, the shoes, the handbag, all that lot. Um, and it just gave me inspiration for this set of nails. So there was a lot of silvery blinginess um, and then I was going to do some sharpie up but I decided to do it with like marble and one stroke instead. Um, and what I wanted is to kind of pull the nails together instead of just having um, like a couple of nails like really silvery and then a couple of nails like bluey pinky I wanted to pull them together a little bit so as you can see this glitter I'm using my wet brush and I'm picking up Narnia which is one of the mix up Monday glitters and it's got really cute butterflies because you can't beat some butterflies and they're both um, holographic and metallic but it's also got that lovely crystal um, like opalite base and some silver shine hex too but the opalite base that has a really nice kind of ultraviolety blue shimmer to it so what that's gonna do is the when the light catches on that silver there's like blue tones to it as well so it will just draw it in like kind of pull it in with the other nails because they also have a lot of blue in i hope i'm making sense there as she rambles on merrily and then I'm going to cap this nail in clear acrylic. Um, so as always, just applying that bead roughly where I want the apex, blending back, and then I'm just pulling forward. Even with extreme length nails, you don't need a massive apex. You don't need to make them chunky and clunky and really fat. Just keep them nice and smooth and streamlined. As long as they've got um, a nice apex, you don't have to make it really big. You just need to keep the nail nicely balanced and then I'm going to cap that entire nail making sure all of that glitter goes matte. Already you can see that kind of ultraviolet -y shimmer to it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to finish capping that nail and then we're going to move on to the next one and I've just been talking for four minutes straight so I'm going to have a little break now. going on to the next now and again I'm going to apply that thin clear base before I start any of the design work.
So first of all, I'm going to come in with the cover pink, starting near the cuticle area and then blending down. And then I'm going to come in with my marble. Now for the marble, I have used polar white, walking over to my desk now to look at the blues, tropical waters, <laughs> Caribbean blue, and Deep Atlantis, and this is from the Blue Collection from Hazel Dixon. So I'm starting off with the white. Generally with a marble you want to go with the lightest colour to use the most of, because obviously it won't be the most overpowering, and then use smaller beads of darker colours. Um, if you used a large bead of dark colour and then small beads of lighter colours, they would be quite overpowering. Um, and then I'm just going to use the tip of my brush and just swirling up and down, really. Just getting that nice kind of marbly, um, swirly, kind of like wind barry. It makes it look a bit like, I don't know, like surf on the beach. Just swirl it up and down. Remember not to overwork your marble. So less is more when you're marbling, because if you keep going, you're just going to end up with a smudge on the nail instead of a nice marble. And I'm just going to keep doing this all the way down the nail until the entire nail is covered. So starting with the white and then picking up the three blues and then just swirling up and down with the tip of my brush. Just going to pop my pinching tool on the other nail just while it's setting. Um, I tend to just do a little pinch on extreme length nails just to make sure there's a nice evenness to them down the length. Uh, and then I'm going to carry on doing my marble. I've just added a little bit of the silver metallic again to just pull the nails together so there's a bit of blue on the other nails and now just adding a little bit of the silver just along kind of the marbly join line and then I'm going to come in with some of the Narnia glitter again I just want a tiny bit you don't want to spend ages doing your marble and then covering it up you just want to add like little accents of glitter in there um, so just add teeny tiny little bits and then I'm going to cap that nail in clear acrylic And then the next two nails are pretty much exactly the same. The only difference is the marble I blended in the other direction um, on this nail so that the, I feel that the nails flow a bit more when they kind of um, like mirror each other. Um, I'm going to do exactly the same. So I'm going to do marble nail on this um, nail and then I'm going to do a full glitter nail on the other one. So I'm just going to leave the video playing for you guys to watch, doing it exactly the same. Uh, and then when it's all finished I'm going to file them in and then I'll come back to go over the decoration.
Okay, so originally I was going to do some Sharpie art, um, but the more I thought about it, I was like, no, stop avoiding it, do some one stroke. I have not done one stroke for at least a year, and I think the last time I tried to do it, I got it out, I tried to do one flower and then just got frustrated and put it away. Um, one stroke is like my nemesis. When I practice, I get good at it, but I don't put enough time into it and when I mean practice like I think one stroke I personally feel to master one stroke you need to put aside an hour or two like almost every day <laughs> so that it becomes second nature to you um, I need to start like just going right okay every single customer this week is having one stroke or something like that just to get myself back into the habit of doing it because it is it's so pretty when it's done well, um, and when you're experienced, you can be quite so creative with it. Uh, but I, I haven't done it in ages, and I was very rusty. So, yeah, it's not the smoothest application. They're not the prettiest flowers. These are very much beginner flowers. Um, but, yeah, so I say this regularly. Maybe I'll start doing a little more one stroke, but, again, I say it a lot, and then I never blooming do. So, yeah, I'm going to do some one stroke flowers on the nails so I'm just doing pink and white ones and just do a couple of flowers on each nail um, it, and I try and describe what I'm doing but um, you can do like a tap or a wiggle or like just kind of like slide your brush um, I kind of do a mix of everything so yeah um, but hopefully I will get more of a practice and my one stroke will improve again but yes so I'm going to just um, do those one stroke flowers and stop rambling. So I'm just coming in with the centre of those flowers with my little, my stubby brush from Hazel and I'm just using the paint, as you can see, like getting it quite dry but then I'm just patting it into the centre of the flower there and it just adds a nice kind of depth to the middle of the flower, kind of pulls the petals together um, and remember whenever you do anything with one stroke or any painting or any artwork you must always double top coat these so that's why I'll be doing a double top coat later and I like to leave it and do something like other bits of decoration on the nail because I don't want to then um drag like you need to make sure the paint is fully dried before you top coat otherwise you'll like drag it down the nail and then you want to cry 
So I'm going on to the little finger, using a little bit of glue, and then picking up crystals. These are Swarovski crystals, just in regular crystal shade. Gonna just do these, put these in the corner, then apply a little bit of glue and sprinkle some silver caviar beads across the nail. And then I'm gonna top coat these. So this is just, again, just adding that little extra bling to the nail because you always need bling, especially when you wear nails this long. And then I'm going to do exactly the same mirroring on the pointer finger. So again, just find those crystals and then going to do some caviar beads. And then I'm going to apply my first layer of top coat over the one stroke. Now this is a 60 second cure top coat, so I'm going to apply this and then cure for 30 seconds. The reason I do that is because I don't want it fully cured because it's a tack free top coat. So I want it part cured so it's not 100% tack free, so then the next layer will adhere to it properly. And then when I apply the second layer of that top coat, I'm also going to apply top coat to the other nails. And this is when they really come to life and like, how blingy is this set? And this is when you get the few stray caviar beads wanting to become one with your top coat. Oh, buggers. And then I'm going to pop this in my lamp and I'm going to cure this for 60 seconds. Then when I've given it a minute or two to cool down, I'm just applying my cuticle oil. And we are done! So I will pop um, an image 
at the end of the video now to show you the inspiration. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. I really enjoyed doing these nails. They're like super blingy, sparkly. I made myself do some one stroke. So yeah, I'm really happy with these. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall see you all again soon. Bye.